start. Okay, so today is chapter nine, section four, truth tables for conditional and biconditional statements. So we talk about conditional and biconditional statements. Uh, the conditionals being, you know, if then, and then the biconditionals being if and only if. So we have so far, you know, we 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 know what that looks like with our p's and q's, right? Uh, but how do we how do we do determine those in a truth table? Okay. So what we're gonna do is um, skip the thing about the well, no, we got let's just take that. So we really care about the the mail thing, but we will we'll talk about that when we get to the end of the section. Uh, but we do want to touch on the conditional statements, the if thens as well as a truth table from that to really drive the point home of how you do the if-thens. Okay, and they're very, they're very, uh, they're very simple to 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 memorize, uh, and I think, anyways. And over here on the right, it, it just shows you all the cases and, and it puts in, into words, you know, what you're what you're seeing exactly. Alrighty. Uh, however, the the best way to just kind of really fully understand the the um, conditional statement in a truth table format is this. The only way that a conditional statement is going to be false is if the first statement is true and the second statement is false, which makes sense, right? You have if P then Q. Well, uh, if we have the P, but then Q is not true, then obviously the conditional statement is going to be false. Whereas if they're both true, it's going to be true. Now, if the uh, first part, right, which we call the antecedent, yeah, the antecedent, uh, if that's false, then your conditional statement is always just going to be true. Okay. The only time the conditional statement is going to be false is if the first part, the antecedent is true and the consequence the second part is false all right so let's put that into practice here all right so this reads we need to construct a truth table uh, for the not q implies not p okay as a conditional statement, if not Q, then not P. So we only have uh, two, two conditions here, uh, two statements rather, Q and P. So we're going to start off with our truth table. Let me see how big we get it. Actually, we don't get it that large, so never mind. So we're going to have our truth table. I looked at a previous, because I know I've made a square before, and I looked at a previous um, lecture. Apparently, this is just a new, uh, a, a newer version of this online tool that I'm using, and for some reason, it doesn't have the square tool, which is kind of crazy for something that's supposed to be newer. Anyways, so we have PQ, and we're also going to need to have a not P and not Q, so not P and not Q. Alrighty, so. And then our statement is simply not Q implies not P. Alrighty, so again, the way, you, the way we set up the truth table, we always just start with this. We say true, true, false, false, and then we go True, false, true, false, true. That's a big old funny looking T. True, false, true, false. Okay. Again, this is how you start off every single truth table with two statements. All right. Now we're going to do the not P. So not P is just going to be the opposite of P. So we're going to, so it's true, true, false, false. So not P is going to be false, false, true, true. And then uh, not Q, just opposite of the of Q, which is going to be false, true, false, true. So false, true, false, true.
true. And I guess I could have written the could have written the not cube part first because that's the antecedent in our actual statement. So let's go ahead and look at our statement now. Okay. So we have not q implies not p. So not q implies not p is only going to be false when the antecedent is true and the consequence is false. That's the only time it's going to be false. Okay. Well, looking at this, we have um, not q is false, so that immediately tells me that this is going to be true because that's fine, right? It it, it does it doesn't. Let's let's try this. Let's um put that in red. When when the antecedent is true and the consequence is false, is the only time that's going to be false. So again, so we have not q is false, so it doesn't really matter what not p is because we're true there. All right, and while we're at it, let's just go and do that with this one as well. So that's false, so we can just put a true here as well. Okay, so now we have these two statements here. All right, so whenever the antecedent is true and the consequence is false, we'll have a false. Well, right here, we have the antecedent not q be true and the consequence not p be false. So that tells me this is going to be false right here. Okay, and of course down here, they're both true, so that's obviously going to be a true statement. So it says to determine the statement is true when the statement is false. The statement is true all the time except for except for when, and of course that just falls uh, follows the conditional statement except for when the antecedent is true and the consequence is false. Okay. Literally only time, no other time. Uh, and we'll see way more examples of that uh, as, as we progress and it'll really drive the point home. But yes, it's only false when the antecedent is true and the consequence is false. And you can see that here. So P implies Q. Whenever whenever P is false, it's just going to just, just put true here, right? Because it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the antecedent or what the consequence is. If the antecedent is false, then the, then the statement's going to be true. Okay. And then here, if they're both true, then, the, then it's obviously going to be true. But only in the, in the, when we have the antecedent be true and the consequence false, do we have a false statement. And of course, we saw that right here. Antecedent's true and the consequence is false. All right, so let's construct another truth table a little bit. Uh, the, the, this this looks pretty pretty awful, I'll admit, because we have parentheses and brackets everywhere. So how many do I need to make? One, two, three, four, five. So I need to make five. So I need to make a big old giant, big old giant box here. I can delete it when needed. There's going to be there's going to be a a problem where I'm not going to create a box, but I have I think a creative way to to work around to make it to where I don't have to draw a humongous box. We'll see. We'll, we'll put it into practice. Alrighty. So we got that. We so we, so we need P. We need Q. We need not P. Okay. So we need it. We need to have a P. We need to have a Q. We need to have a not P. Okay, we got to have a P or Q. Sorry, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And then a little bit bigger. And then the final statement. I think that should be enough, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Oh, I just need five. Okay, well, whatever. We have the five. Okay, so uh, again, I'm, I have I have P's and Q's, so we're just going to start off with that. Oh yeah, let's do this. Let's put one more, one more line here for the top. Now this is a really nice looking box here. 
clarity. So we have the oh, that's all right. So we've got the P and we have Q. Okay, and again, how do we start? How do we always start P and Q? Well, it's just true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Ready? Next up, we're going to have a not P. So not P. So let's do this. Not P. All right. Not P again is just going to be the opposite of P. So instead of true, true, false, false, we're going to have false, false, true, true. All right. So we have that. Next up, let's have. Well, maybe I should have. One, two, three. Hmm. I actually don't think it's, let's see, what, what did the textbook do? I actually don't think it's a bad idea that, that, that I made one extra box because we're going to have, we're, we're just going to do the P or Q. Okay. And so P or Q, if you recall the or statement, as long as one of them is true, we're okay. Right. So as long as one is true. So we have a true here, there's a true there, there's a true here. But this one has both of them being false, so this is going to be false. Okay. And then let's do the P or Q and not P. So if you recall for P and Q, I'm sorry, P or Q and not P, we're going to look at this column for the P or Q, and then this is for the not P. Well, in order for it to be in, for, in order for the and statement to be true, then they both must be true. This is false true, so that's not going to work. This is false true, so that's not going to work. This is true true, so that's going to work. But this is true false, and that's not going to work. Okay, they both have to be true. So we're going to put false, false, true, false. And then we can do the last statement. How in the world did the textbook do it with just five? One, one two. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. Oh well. We we did it the the long and more precise way. Uh, one moment. Let me let me check that because I am I'm kind of curious how how they're really trying to instruct this. Not p. Implies Q. All right, what, what what are we doing? Oh yeah, okay, good. Thank you. All right, <laughs> I appreciate that. I was wondering how, how how they're gonna do this without doing all that. All right, well, problem solved. Okay, so oh, man, my 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 knot here looks kind of awful. Oh, that's not the eraser. Fix that not p. Make it a little bit, a little bit squigglier. Oh gosh, that's horrible. <laughs> All right, so maybe I should have just stuck with what I had. All right, that's a not p. Okay, um, it's it's hard to do small small movements on here. So anyways, so we have the the if then statement. We have the conditional statement, and in order for the conditional statement to be true, okay. I'm sorry. Well, actually, we can we can really just look at for the uh, on, on the false uh, statement, right? Uh, in order for it to be false, then the antecedent, the first statement, must be true. Okay. And in this case, only this one is true. So if the antecedent starts with a false, which these two are false, or I'm sorry, these three are false. So and this being the antecedent, which is matching this statement here, since it starts with false, let's just go ahead and put true there and just kind of take that. Take that out of the way and fill in a lot of the blanks here. Okay, so now we're looking at this statement. Well, the antecedent is this one, and the consequence is this one. In order for it to be false, then the antecedent must must be true, which we have, but the consequence must be false, which we don't have. Okay, so since the uh, antecedent is true and the consequence is false, I'm sorry. Since the antecedent is true and the consequence is true. Then we have a true statement here. So this truth table, right, the truth table of P or Q and not P implies Q is always a true statement, right? And of course, we talked about 
uh, a statement that's always true in the previous section. We call that a tautology. And I wonder if I can fit this. Uh, we don't have to actually put that anywhere, so forget that. All right? But this statement is always true. All right? Now we, perfect. Okay, so we have now talked about, you know, we 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 we've used abstract examples for a lot of the stuff that we've done for these truth tables, right? We've just done p's and q's, and we have had some some other word examples, right? But but they were carefully crafted, carefully curated words to make the truth table simple. All right now, what I think is pretty darn cool, and I actually kind of like this about this textbook, and I'm going to make one more plug because I don't think I have today yet. This is a very fun class for me to teach. Uh, but now we're going to actually have an excerpt from the New York Times, and we're going to break that down into a truth table. And this is, okay, this is where I was going to try and get a little clever here. Okay. So let's see if I can get a little clever here. All right, because I mean, this is obviously just it, it, it's a humongous uh, truth table box. So what I was going to try and do is just mark some stuff out. So we'll get to that here in a moment. Let's see. All right. All right. So first thing we need to do. Is we need to figure out um, how we're going to describe each one of these senses. Well, actually, Sherman, what, we, what would actually be a lot cooler is if we actually read the problem, huh? So let's actually read the problem before we proceed. So the following is from an editorial that appeared in the New York Times. Our entire tax system depends upon the vast majority of taxpayers who attempt to pay the taxes they owe, having confidence that they're being treated fairly and that their competitors and neighbors are also paying what is due. If, okay, so th this is our statement here. If the public concludes that the IRS cannot meet these ex basic expectations, the risk to the tax system will become very high and the effect very difficult to reverse. So A is going to read, construct a truth table for the, under, for the, uh, for the underlying statement. All right, so we're going to, well, honestly, I don't know if I, don't know if I should go this route. We're, we're, we're here now, though. All right, so my plan was to just kind of, kind of go crazy like uh, like this. Well, no, maybe I should go like this. I'm gonna go a little crazy like this, and then just kind of erase, you know, the uh, the solution. That way, I can pretend like I'm doing at least some instructing as opposed to reading off of a board. There we go. Not so bad. Good. All right. So before we begin this, we, we need to we need to break our sentences, or rather our statements, down into our variables, right? And of course, the variables that we use are P, Q, and R. Okay. So we have the statements, and real quickly we see that we it's, it's the if then, right? If the uh, the public concludes that the IRS system cannot meet these basic expectations, the risk to the tax system will become very high and the effects very difficult to reverse. Alrighty. So again, uh, I feel like the the big the big part here is we have to pay attention to this comma. Okay, hopefully you can kind of see that comma there. There is a comma here after expectations. So what that comma is is telling us is that that's where the if then statement breaks. That's where the conditional statement provides the arrow. Okay. So before we begin with that, we break we break them down into P, Qs, and Rs. So P is going to be the public concludes that the IRS can meet best basic expectations. Okay. Because the sentence says cannot. So what we're going to do is obviously we're just going to put we're going to put the the negation in front of the P there. Okay. So P is going to mean that. Uh, is going to conclude that IRS can meet ba basic expectations. And then, of course, the other two statements are pretty easy. Uh, Q is going to be the risk to the tax system. Uh, it will be very high. Of course, we see that very high here. And, which is the, the uh, that we separate our statements, the effect is very difficult to reverse. So how would we write this in our, um, in our, oh, shoot, I guess, well, I guess I could have uh, marked off 
mark uh, mark this off. But I mean, there it is, obviously. But let's talk through it anyways. So, if P is the public concludes that the IRS can meet basic, basic expectations, but the sentence reads, the sentence over here reads uh, that we cannot meet basic basic expectations. So we're going to say that not. Oh, that's big. We're going to say not P. And again, I said that we have our arrow there. Or I'm sorry, not arrow. We have our comma there, which means that it's we're going to put the arrow for the conditional statement. And then we're, we put in parentheses because it is after the conditional statement. And it's just going to be reading over here. It says the risk to the tax system will become very high and the effect is very difficult to reverse. So we just have the and there. So it's going to be Q and R. Okay, and of course we see that here because I forgot to mark that out. Okay, well, as we very quickly construct a truth table because I don't have to do any sort of any sort of drawing here, we know that we go uh, for a a three statement truth table. We go true, 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 false, 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 false. Right, and then for the Q we alternate. Let's make this smaller, and smaller. We go true, true, false, false. True, true, false, false. And then for R, you just alternate true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. This is this is the basic structure of any three statement truth table. Okay. Well, for not P, again, this is a pretty simple exercise, right? For not P, we're just going to be the opposite of P. So this is true, 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 false, 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 false. So not P is obviously going to be the opposite of that. So it's going to be false, 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 false. And then true, 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 true. This is working out pretty well, right? All right, so, and then we have Q and R. So again, in order for Q and R to be a true statement, all right, we're looking st strictly right here, Q and R. In order for it to be a true statement, then they both must be true. Well, they're both true here. They're both true here. And that's it, okay? Everywhere else, it's false. So we would say, we would go true, and then false, 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 and then true, and then false, false, false. So we're, we're, we're constructing this pretty easily now, right? Just having to erase stuff instead of write them, writing them. I should have done this sooner. And now we can do the, the conditional statement, the if-then statement. The if-then statement being, all right, again, if, if we start with a false, right, because the, the, uh, the antecedent being not P, if we start with the false, which we see with these first four, we can just go ahead and put true down there for that, right? So we can just put true, 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 true. Doesn't really matter, right? However, the last four, they are true. And then we're gonna have to do just a little, 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 little tricky stuff, but not, not too tricky, right? This is only going to be a false statement if the antecedent is true and the consequence is false. Okay, well, we see that we have true to false, true to false, true to false. So all those are going to be false. Okay, and this one's a different color F because it goes with, uh, it goes with B. So that kind of gives it away, but uh, whatever. Well, but this one is true to true, so we're going to say that this is a true statement. So that is how we constructed our truth table. Alrighty. And again, like I said, it kind of gave away the, the, uh, the ending, but I mean, at the same time, explaining it also helps. So let's look at B. So this reads, suppose that the public concludes that the IRS cannot meet basic expectations. Okay, so we're gonna say that they cannot meet basic expectations. So we're gonna say, so we have P, let's do this, for P, Q and R. Okay, so if we cannot meet basic uh, expectations, then that's going to be a false statement. The risk to, to the tax system becomes very high, so we're going to say that that is going to be Q. I mean, not Q. That's going to be true. Sorry. But the effects are not very difficult to reverse, so we're going to say that is false. Okay, so. And it reads, under these conditions, is the underlying statement true or false? So we're going to look for, on our truth table, this combination of false, true, false for PQR, respectively. 
So for P, the only false ones are obviously these four. And then for Q, the, the, the true ones that are with the false ones are these two right here. And then lastly for the R, uh, where we're false, is this one right here. So this line is the one that corresponds with the with problem B. And we see that under these conditions, this would be a false statement. I think it's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and erase all that so I can make, make sure the notes are nice and pretty. But that's how we do that. And again, this is a pretty good example because this is a real world example. It is it is from the New York Times and it's you know just kind of, kind of a cool way to just break down a uh, a statement. Right? Lastly, we have biconditional statements. So we have our conditional statement, our conditional statement uh, that we talked about, right? The if then. The biconditional statement is the if and only if. Maybe I can fit all this to the left side, and then we can summarize on the right side here. So by conditional, yeah, this will fit. And then the summary is pretty good because the, the summary, honestly, is is the only thing you you really need. Not I won't say the only thing you need, but um, it, it sums up. Well, it's a summary, right? The summaries are supposed to sum up uh, this this section. Real quick, let me check out if I need to snip anything else. Okay. Alrighty, so the biconditional statement, looking up here at the top left. In section two, we introduced a biconditional connective, which is the, which is the arrows pointing both ways, translated as if and only if. The biconditional statement, P, if and only if, means that P implies Q and Q implies P. Symbolically, this is written as P implies Q and Q implies P. So basically, just with this sentence here, with a sentence, uh, you know, we basically just take away the and and put the our our and connective there. Alrighty. So to create the truth table for P, uh, uh, P if and only if Q, we have our uh, P if only if Q here. But and again, kind of like the takeaway from uh, instead instead of going through all that, like we did on the um, conditional statement, the takeaway here is is that a biconditional is true only when the component statements have the same value. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it's only going to be true, so in, the, in this particular case we see P and Q. Well, when P is true and Q is true, then I have a true statement. Okay, because they're, 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 they're the exact same. I think I've had too much coffee. However, these next two, we have P true, Q false, and P false, Q true. Since they do not have the exact same, then it is false. Whereas down here, they do, they again have the exact same, at least this time it is they're both false, but it makes it a true statement. And of course, we can see the, the summary, I say of this section, but this is really the summary of the last two sections, right? Uh, we talked about negations, conjunctions, disjunctions, conditional, and then biconditional. I think this is definitely something that you should write down or uh, bookmark or, or, or something because this this is um, this really sums up this chapter I guess not not just these past two sections so let's 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 put the biconditional to work and see how we can do this okay so this this reads determine whether the statement is a tautology okay so in order to figure out if it's a tautology we need to figure out if it's an, if it is always a true statement so one two three four five six um, you know let's actually let's, let's try that again I think I think that worked pretty well last time we're just gonna take this truth table um, I'll talk about it I'll blow it up but I'll, I'll just um, I'll, I'll blot out what I can but I think that worked pretty well, and it, and it looks better on my eyeballs. Actually, those first two are always the same, right? Because we have we only have two statements, and we always construct 
the truth table the same with the first two statements. Okay, so constructing this, this table, again, we always start going true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, always like this, ready? And then from here, we have P or Q. And remember, if we have the or statement, then all we need to do is have one of one of the two conditions be true. And as long as one of the, the two conditions are true, then we're gonna have a true statement, okay? Well, we have a true statement, obviously in the first row here, we have a true statement in the second row, we have a true statement in the third row, but in the fourth row, we have both of them being false, so we have a false statement down here. Okay, so next up, we're going to get, find the not Q because you know the whole point of this is to uh, construct a truth table for this statement here. We did the P Q, we did a P or Q. Now I have to figure out the not Q. Okay, and the not Q is is just as easy. Not Q is just going to be the opposite of Q. So instead of true, false, true, false, it's going to be false, true, false, true. Alrighty. Next up, we're going to talk about the not Q or P. Okay. So not Q or P. I'm sorry, not not an or. Not Q implies P. So as I've said before, whenever whenever we go about doing this, it's probably I say probably. I think I would just go ahead. And if I see a false for my antecedent, and again, my antecedent being my first statement, if I see a false here, which I do right for this one, my laser, that right here and right here, I'm just going to go ahead and put a true there. So I'm going to put a true here and a true here. Okay. Next up, we'll, we'll actually try to follow the, the, the antecedent um, rules. So we have... Uh, what am I saying? Oh, here we go. So not Q, here's true, and then the uh, consequence P is also true. So we have uh, not Q implies P, so that means we're going to be true. Right? So it goes, it's, it goes from a true statement to a true statement, and that's always going to be true. Well, lastly, we have a true statement, um, a true statement to a false statement and so a true statement to a false statement is going to be false so we, we have constructed the not Q implies P true 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 false now we can construct the the biconditional statement the entire bicondi biconditional statement here and again both of these statements must have must say the exact same thing right they, they either have to both be true or they either have to both be false so we have, we're looking at, uh, we're looking at this one and we're looking at this one. They have to have the exact same truth value, either both true or both false. Okay. So the first row, we see that they are indeed both true. So it's, we would say this is true. The second row, we say that we see that they are both true. So this is true. Oh, it's not my eraser. This is true. And then the third row, and honestly, I'll just uh, go ahead because I mean, we, they're both true here and then they're both false here. So it's all true. So since this is all, this always ends up as a true statement, this is indeed a tautology. So to answer question four, it reads to determine whether the statement is a tautology. Since it is always true, it is indeed a tautology. Okay, so that's four number four rather and now we get to a super fun one another kind of uh, well, word problem and this is what the the section started out with but I didn't think I didn't think uh, I need to talk about the very beginning part of this but let's okay. man this is a long one So this reads, your author recently received a letter from his credit card company that began as follows. 
Dear Mr. Bob Blitzer, I am pleased to inform you that a personal super million dollar prize entry, number 66556710, has been assigned in your name as indicated above. Here's un the underlying part is our, is our statement we're probably going to be looking at. If your super million dollar prize entry number matches the winning pre-selected number and you return, the, uh, you return the number before the deadline stated below, you will win $1 million. It's as simple as that. Okay, so consider the claim in the underlying conditional statement. Uh, I'm going to have to read it again. Suppose that your super million dollar prize entry number does not match the winning pre-selected number. You obediently return the number uh, before the deadline and you win only a free issue of a magazine. Okay, uh, and the, but, the, but the other 11 uh, months you have to actually pay. Under these conditions, can you sue the credit card company for making a false claim? So how can, how can we break this down? And we're not going to be using a truth table here. Instead, we're going to be uh, just, just, just assigning true and false values, kind of like how we did at the end of the last section as well. So let's go ahead and get the, get the text get ready to go. Because again, it doesn't save. It's unfortunate. That's the way it is. Make it white. All right, so we have to figure out P's, Q's, and I'm pretty sure there's an R in there. So anyways, we have, my statement is, if your super million dollar prize entry number matches the winning pre-selected number. Okay, so we're going to write P to be uh, my super million dollar prize entry number. Okay, so that's P. And I guess I got, well, it, it's capitalized there, but I'm not going to capitalize it. All right, so that's P. Q is going to be uh, that I return, it says, and you return the number before the deadline stated. So, uh, so I just, I return the number before the deadline. And then R is going to be I, I win a uh, million dollars win one million uh, I guess we'll put cents there too win one million dollars so this is going to be my my statement or I'm sorry my well I guess they are my statements but those these are my P's Q's and R's so now let, let's set this up as a as a uh, logical statement with 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 symbols so again, let's read it. So if your super million dollar prize entry number matches the winning pre-selected number and you return the number before the deadline stated below, right? Again, notice, notice the comma, right? The comma is right there. So uh, the, the first two statements are going to be the ones in parentheses. So we're going to have, so if my super million dollar entry, so, so P and Q, right? So if my million dollar prize entry matches winning pre-select number and I return it before the deadline, so this is the first part, and then the comma goes and then it says, I win a million dollars. Alrighty. So now uh, let's, the, we, we have our, our, um, our statement set up logically. So let's proceed here. It says, suppose that your super million uh, dollar prize entry number does not match the winning pre-selected number. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, so this is going to be, so P, that's going to be a false statement. Okay, and, alrighty, and uh, where are we at? Suppose you obediently you obediently return the number before the deadline. So I return the number. So I uh, that is a true statement. So I end up doing that. Okay. And and you win only a free issue of magnet. So obviously I don't win a million dollars. So I don't win a million dollars. So that's going to be false. Right. Under these conditions, can you sue the credit card company for making a false claim? So let's actually let's actually do this because I'm going to need I'm going to need a little more room for this. So let's, let's erase this but rewrite it. Okay, so. We're going to have, we say that this was a false statement. 
I do return it, so that's true, but I do not win a million dollars, okay? Well, a looking right here, if I have a false and a true statement, we know that that is going to be false, right? Because they're not both the same. So it's gonna be false. And then that implies a false outcome, right? If false, then false. Well, we know that if false, then false, we know that that is the, since they're the same, that makes it a true statement, right? Because they must be the same. So it looks like what they're claiming here, all right? Well, you're not gonna be winning a million dollars and you're probably gonna have to be paying for a uh, for 11 months of, of, of a magazine. There, It's not really a false claim because their claim, if we break it down logically, is true, right? Their, their, their claim is true but you're still going to be you're still going to be out um, 11 months worth of credit cards, and I guess that's it. All right, so that concludes today's lecture.